Hi, and welcome to another episode of Wonders of Chemistry with Mickey G. In this episode, I'll be showing you how to derive both these formulae, which I presented in my previous video. As you may recall, these formulae can be used for calculating the ATP yield from the beta oxidation of even numbered saturated fatty acids. Okay, let's get started with the first formula, which assumes an ATP equivalence of 2 ATPs per NADH and 1.5 ATPs per FADH2. Let's begin with a mathematical expression that gives the total ATPs produced from all the acetyl-CoAs generated from the complete beta oxidation of a fatty acid. Note the letter C in the following mathematical expressions represents the number of carbons within the saturated fatty acid. C over 2 multiplied by the number 10 where C over 2 gives the total number of acetyl-CoAs produced from the complete beta oxidation of the fatty acid. Please refer to my video titled Beta Oxidation Part 1 for an explanation of why this is so. While the number 10 represents the number of ATPs produced per acetyl-CoA. Recall how for every acetyl-CoA produced during beta oxidation that enters into the citric acid cycle causes the cycle to spin once. One turn of the citric acid cycle produces one NADH at step number three, one NADH at step number four, one GTP at step number five, one FADH2 at step number six, and finally one NADH at step number eight. If we now add up the ATP equivalents for each of these molecules, 2.5 plus 2.5 plus 1 plus 1.5 plus 2.5, we end up with a total of 10 ATPs per cycle. Or put another way, each acetyl-CoA is equal to 10 ATPs. So that explains where the number 10 comes from. Now, we can simplify this expression given 10C over 2, which can be further simplified to give 5C. Or put another way, if you divide 10 carbons by 2, you get 5 carbons. Next, let's write a mathematical expression for calculating the total ATP from all the reduced coenzymes produced from all the beta oxidation cycles. Where C over 2 minus 1 represents the total number of beta oxidation cycles. Again, please refer to my video titled Beta Oxidation Part 1 for an explanation of why this is so. While the number 4 represents the total number of ATPs produced per cycle from the reduced coenzymes. Recall that each beta oxidation cycle produces 1 FADH2 at step number 1 with an equivalence of 1.5 ATPs and 1 NADH at step number 3 with an equivalence of 2.5 ATPs. Adding each of these ATP values together gives us a total of 4 ATPs per beta oxidation cycle. So that explains where the number 4 comes from. We can now simplify this whole expression by multiplying C over 2 and the negative 1 within the brackets by 4. Multiplying C over 2 by 4 gives 4C over 2. While 4 times negative 1 gives negative 4. We can further simplify 4C over 2 to give 2C. So, in summary, this results in the expression 2C minus 4. Finally, we have to subtract 2 ATPs for fatty acid activation. If you want to know why it's 2 ATPs as opposed to just the 1, then please refer to my video titled Fatty Acid Transport. Okay, we are now ready to add up similar values from each of these three steps. 5C plus 2C gives 7C. While adding up the negative values gives us minus 6. 
So the expression 7C-6 gives the total yield of ATP from the beta oxidation of even numbered saturated fatty acids. Now just in case you are unfamiliar with the way algebra works, 7C in algebra represents 7 times C. This needs to be performed first before subtracting the number 6. In order to ensure this, I place the 7 times C in brackets. Hence the formula 7 times C minus 6. Okay, so that's how you derive the first formula. Now it's your turn. Attempt to derive the second formula using the steps outlined for the first formula. Remember that the second formula assumes an ATP equivalence of 3 ATPs per NADH and 2 ATPs per FADH2. Now there is no need to worry as I have included the model answers for the steps involved later in the video so that you can compare your answers to. Just pause the video for now and come back once you are confident that you have outlined all the major steps including the simplification of all the mathematical expressions that lead you to derive the second formula. As you can see the steps are pretty much identical to the first formula. The only exceptions being the number of ATPs produce per acetyl-CoA within step number one and the number of ATPs produced per beta oxidation cycle that we see in step number two. You may recall from the previous formula that the values were 10 and 4 respectively as opposed to 12 and 5. Let's quickly take the opportunity to see why these key values are different. Recall how for every acetyl-CoA produced during beta oxidation that enters into the citric acid cycle causes the cycle to spin once. One turn of the citric acid cycle produces one NADH at step number three, one NADH at step number four, one GTP at step five, one FADH2 at step number six, and one NADH at step number eight. Adding the ATP equivalence for each of these molecules gives a total of 12 ATP per cycle. Or put another way, each acetyl-CoA is equal to 12 ATP. Let's now shift our focus to one cycle of beta oxidation. Now during step 1 we produce 1 FADH2 and during step 3 we produce 1 NADH. If we add the ATP equivalence for each of these molecules we end up with the value of 5 ATPs. So the number 12 relates to the number of ATPs produced per acetyl-CoA, while the number 5 represents the total ATPs produced per beta oxidation cycle in respect to the FADH2 and the NADH created. From this, depending on your ability with algebra, you should have been able to derive all the remaining mathematical expressions that eventuate in the derivation of the second formula. Now in my next episode I will be showing you how to calculate the number of moles of ATP produced per gram of fatty acid and relating this to the energy density of different fats that you may have in your diet. So please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to be notified when this is released. Finally, if you found this to be useful, please click like. Thank you for listening.